Oh, full two, three rips. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are uh, grateful to be able to come into your presence, Lord. We are grateful to be able to walk into this temple, into this room, into this place, God, and to gather with saints, to gather with one another. And Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would just begin to prepare our hearts for what it is that you want to do in us and through us. And Father, I pray that you would just come and minister to every need that's represented here, every need that's represented in this room, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to open our hearts and ears, our eyes to see and hear what it is that the Lord wants to do, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are the one who meets every need. You are our provision. You are the ram that's in the thicket, God. Thank you, Jesus. We can come to you with every need, every desire, every hurt, every longing, Lord. And you don't shun us and turn us away. You don't scold us for approaching you. There's not a magic way of doing it. There's just coming as we are. So this evening, we come as we are in this place. Not with perfection or performance, not with, not with grand words and wise sayings, God, but we come as we are, not willing to twist the ear of God or the arm of God to, to bend to our will, but that you would come and shape and mold us, that we would bend to yours. God, that you would come and minister to every need. That you would deepen our walk with you, that you would deepen our faith with you, that you would deepen our trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me, when the world is all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain. Take away, 
my heart will choose to say oh blessed be your name you give and take away you give and take away my heart will choose to say lord blessed be darkness closes in Lord that's what I'm gonna say every blessing pour out God turn back to praise and when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say oh I will say Till I'm God, I'll say, blessed be your name. Yeah. 
that could not hold you they'll talk before you and silence the boast of sin and grace the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you Yes, can we give him praise in this room? Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Who can compare to the Lord? There's none like you in heaven or earth, oh God. God, there's no one who compares, oh God. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord, this is our prayer tonight, Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, you are Sweetest of loves 
You're the desire of the nations. You're the desire of our hearts. Oh God, oh God. Teach us how to hunger and thirst for you. Teach us how to hunger and thirst for you. Teach us how to be hungry for the things of God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. 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 God is great. God is great. You know, we can't just, we can't just sing that. You know, because that, that's something that comes from the heart. God, great are you, Lord. Like, that's just something that comes from deep within. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, that we can come before you another Thursday. Lord, another Thursday of worship and the word. 
where, Lord, we can worship you, Lord. We can, we can praise you, Lord. We can, Lord, edify each other and lift each other up here, Lord. And we pray, Father, that your spirit would move freely in this place tonight. Lord, that you would just continue, Lord, to move in this church as you have been moving, Lord. Lord, let, let it not stop here tonight, Lord. Matter of fact, Lord, we, we want an increase. We desire an increase here tonight, Lord. Turn up the flames, oh, Lord. Lord, that we might feel a touch from you tonight. Lord, and we just give you glory and honor. We, we just, Lord, I'm just excited just to be in your presence again, Lord. It just, Lord, it's like uh, I'm in a drought, Lord. I'm, I'm just like in a dry place until I'm able to be in your presence, Lord. And, Lord, you refill us once again. So, Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. And we ask that you would continue, Lord, on this night of worship, that your spirit would move here freely. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good all the time. Amen, amen. This is a quick one tonight. Just uh, just one announcement. Stronger Together Potluck Dinner, Saturday, May 14th at 6 p.m. right here at SCF. Stronger Together, the new ministry. They're doing a potluck dinner um, right here, Saturday, May 14th at 6 p.m. If you're interested in Stronger Together, if you want to know what that's all about, see Elder Carol Panado, and she can give you all the info, the 9401. I was going to say the 911. That's emergency. So you're going to give you the 401, all right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can I have the ushers come forward? So tonight we're going to do something that's a little bit different, if you guys aren't aware. Um, so tonight's a worship night. Um, but in, intermittently, we're going to have um, a few minutes of, of uh, encouragement from the pastors that are going to come forward. So just I want to encourage you just to step into the worship. I want to encourage you just to let the Holy Spirit move in you tonight. And let's see what God does. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this, this, this altar, this altar is like going to be like sacred space. All right. So I want to encourage you to come and step into the sacred space this, this evening. I kind of feel like God's going to do something here. So don't be afraid. Let's, let's. Take off all the chains, shake it off, get off, get off all that stuff, all that rust, and just come on up here and let's praise and worship God tonight. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for this tithes and offering, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do in us and for us, Lord. You do so much. You give so much, Lord, and all we can give is a little in return. But, Lord, we pray a blessing over it, Lord. We pray that you would continue to do all that you do in this church and outside of this church, Lord. Lord, for your people and your church, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you again for tonight. Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just move upon us powerfully. Lord, speak in every speaker. Move upon every speaker, Lord. Let your word just of truth just come forward. Father, Lord, that we would leave here encouraged, refreshed, renewed, invigorated, ready to go back into the battle. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I am... Um I just pray right now that the uh, presence of the Lord would just begin to speak into the hearts of your people. That uh, it's not my words or, or Pastor Frank's or Pastor Wes's words, but Father, it's the word of God that transforms us, that renews us, that refreshes our mind and, and uh, releases the captives and opens the blind eyes, God. So this evening, I, my ask of you, Father, is that, that it would not be anything that we could work or muster up or or um, manipulate, Father, but uh, that you would come and you would convict of sin, that you would that you would purge our hearts and minds and souls, that you would cleanse us from unrighteousness, that you would that you would restore the broken, that you would re revive those that are that feel dead inside, God, that you would just come and do what you have designed to do, what you have planned to do from the start, that you would come and resurrect lives, God. And I ask this in Jesus' name. You can have a seat. We're just gonna we're gonna just chat for a little bit and. Um, I, um, a couple weeks and weekends ago, I decided to um, brush our dog because we have three dogs and our house will, you know, have random clumps of hair all throughout. So I figured it was probably time as we went from sp uh, the winter into spring. It's probably time that we go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, clean them up a little bit. And I mean, probably could make another dog with the amount of hair that was in the room. Um, and so after we brushed him, I let, I let them out. And the first thing that he went and did is he went and rolled in the dirt. 
And um, as I've been thinking about tonight and, and praying about tonight, I, I couldn't help but think about how often we do the same thing. How often it's really easy that through the Holy Spirit and the washing of the word, we have these moments where we feel free and we feel revived and we feel renewed and rejuvenated in the presence of God. And we have great worship and we got great preaching. And then we just go home and we get back in the dirt. We are facing an enemy that seeks to, to kill, steal, and destroy. He is out for those very things in your life. He is out to take what isn't his. He's out to take what belongs to God. He's, he's out for those things. It's intentional. It's planned. It's not a mistake. It's not just a bad day. It's not just a happenstance. It's not just a, a whirlwind of emotions. He is out to seek you, to kill you, destroy you. And I can't help but wonder, what is the, what is the thing that we're supposed to do? We, we know that life has changed, right, so drastically. There's so many of you much older than I, maybe not much, but you are significantly older than I. And you can probably say in life, life, the world wasn't like it is today. How many times have somebody said those words? It wasn't like that in my day. When I was your age, it didn't look like this. Or people didn't act like that. Or we didn't see that on the TV screen. Or people didn't do those things back when I was however old, right? What's, what's changed, really? And so I think a lot of times we look at that and um, we kind of use it to kind of like almost cast stones at the next generation a lot of times, right? We, we kind of use that as a way of saying, you are worse than I was. But what's, what's, where do we go from here, right? What's the whole purpose? How are we supposed to, how are we supposed to navigate this world knowing that at one point either our life ends or Christ comes back, right? That's, that's the end goal. We end, either our timeline on this earth stops or his timeline begins, whichever one comes first. And for many of us, it might be the first. And for maybe some, we get the, the opportunity that we get to be part of that latter part. But either way, we get to be part of the latter part, I suppose, right? And, um, and so it brings me to our scripture tonight. And it's First uh, Peter 4. And it says this, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. The end of all things is at hand. So be self-controlled and sober-minded. For what? For the sake of your prayers. And I, I'm re I read that passage, and I've been actually, it's been on my mind a lot. I read this a couple weeks ago, and for some reason, I just can't seem to, to like, get this, these words out of my mind. The end of all things. If any of us have ever seen a good, you know, Armageddon movie, right, where the end is coming, kind of one of two things happens. Either the world just goes completely berserk and we just go haywire and people hurt each other and kill each other and take what's not theirs and, and they just lose all control. Or what's the other thing that happens? Typically there's the hero that rises up and we gotta go do something and we gotta save the world. We gotta find the plan B. But in this letter, Peter says, the end of all things is at hand. So get up and do something. Get up and go save the world. No. Be sober-minded. Be self-controlled. How long ago was this written? What year was Peter written? 64? A.D. 64 A.D. Their mindset is on the end is, the end is near. And here we are. 2022, and the words have never been more true. The end is near. So what, what's your responsibility? What's your plan? What do we do? What do we do with that? It's not so that we get to stand in the spotlight. It's not so that we get to be successful. It's not so that we get to chase the American dream. It's not so that we can gain up as much wealth as possible. I don't see those instructions. So save a lot of money. Use your coupons. Be 
be self-controlled. Be sober-minded for the sake of your prayer life. We see prayer as almost, we often interpret prayer as this thing of, I can get what I want. If I say it enough times, if I say it in just the right way, if I, if I am, am I holy enough in this moment to ask for the thing, then he'll hear me and he'll give it to me. Or prayer is just, I'm going to just pray really hard that my, my situation changes. And prayer is those things. But I believe that more often than not, prayer is not really meant for those things, but it's meant for us to conform to his will. It's not for everything around us to conform to the things that we want it to be or look like or, or sound like, but it's meant for me to say, I can't do this, I don't understand, I can't control it, but God, help me submit to your will. Help me submit to the will of God in my life. And if this be the will of God, then help me to endure it with grace. And if not, I pray this cup would pass from me. Even Christ prayed that prayer. If it be your will, let this cup pass from me, right? But we know that it wasn't. And we know that the instruction has been that we should take up our cross too. And we should walk with him. So my encouragement is, is this. It's not even my encouragement. It's his encouragement. The end of all things is at hand. It's near. But be self-controlled. And sober-minded. Self-controlled. When we did our fasting, the thing I gave up was social media, and it was painfully um, made aware to me how much I look at my phone, how much I check Facebook, how much I check social media in general, but just look at my phone. I check my work email. I check my personal email. I respond to things for work, I, like all hours of the day. I, I'm checking text messages. I'm doing this, doing that. How often I do it. And through those three weeks that we fasted, it was like the, the, the urgency or the, the urge to pick this up and do something. Even though I had deleted things off my phone, I would pick it up and, oh, I don't have that. I can't tell you the number of times in the, over that course of that three weeks I did that very thing. And it's concerning to me, um, but that's where our society has kind of become. It's come to that point where... The first thing we do is, I'm going to relax, so I'm just going to scroll. Or I'm going to, instead of connecting with the people around me, I'm going to go ahead and text message everybody else that's not with me. How often I do that. What self-control am I demonstrating? If the first thing I do in the morning is make sure I check my Facebook messages. What self-control am I demonstrating if when I'm having a bad day, I got to make sure I throw that post up so that everybody knows how bad a day it's been? <laughs> that was not a dig at anybody in this room, I promise. <laughs> Facebook memories um, remind me of my earlier days on Facebook often and how embarrassing they have been. And um, I will leave it at that. Be sober-minded. Sober-minded. We can compare that to someone who's intoxicated, right? Things come out when you're not sober. Things just spill out of you. How, how much loose is that tongue when you're not sober? When you've been around somebody, that guy or that lady at the, the family Easter party who's just had a little too much, and they just start letting everything out. There's a command for us too. be sober minded, not necessarily drunk. But what happens when you get so worked up emotionally that everything just comes out? What good, bad or indifferent, everything just begins to spill out. Be sober minded. The end is near. Yes, we know that. We know the end is near. But you don't need to get wild. You don't need to lose control. You don't need to, you don't need to spiral out. But be self-controlled. Be sober minded for the sake of your prayer life. We're gonna go back into worship.
And you know what? You position yourself in this room or with the Lord, however you feel fit, you see fit. If it's at your seat, then you seek the Lord at your seat. If it's at this altar, then you seek the Lord at the altar. But whatever it is, seek the Lord.
this is my surrender here is where i lay it down you are all i'm chasing now this is my surrender
as deep cries out to deep as deep cries out to deep as deep cries out to deep as deep cries out to How many of you really want more of Jesus and less of you? Amen? Amen? Do you want more of Jesus and less of you? Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means letting go of all the pride. That means letting go of all your anger. That means letting go of all the stuff that you carry around, all the things that cause you to stumble and fall. When you want more of Jesus and less of you, that means letting go of some stuff. Is there anybody in here tonight that wants to let go of some stuff? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I don't know about you, but if there's something in me that I need to let go of in order for Jesus to come in, then I have to let go and let God. We have to let go and let God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated for, for a quick minute. Hallelujah. 
So we're in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through 11 is actually what we're doing. And I'm, I got the middle part. So I'm kind of like the, the meat in the sandwich. So, so I, I got to be good. I got to be good. It, it says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You know, when I think about love deeply, you know, what does that mean to love deeply? What does that mean to love someone deeply, that it covers a multitude of sins? I, I think it's talking about a love that we don't see demonstrated so much here anymore. Because I think when we think of love, we think of this happy, this, this butterfly feeling in my stomach, feeling of love. But when we love someone deeply, in order that it can cover a multitude of sins, that means we got to love someone enough to let some stuff that they do get by us. we got to love someone enough that the thing that made us mad, that the thing that offended us, we still got to love them through it. Is anybody with me? we got to love them so deeply... That even though I'm angry, even though I'm hurt, even though I'm frustrated, I still got to love them. That covers a multitude of sins. You know, I, I think about this love, and I'm like, you know, God, how can you expect me to love someone so deep that it covers a multitude of sins? And he said, well, I, I loved you that deeply. That... I covered your sin. So, so we have to love each other so much that no matter what happens, for the sake of fellowship, for the sake of relationship, we got to love through it. We got to love through it. We got to stop getting offended with each other, getting hurt by each other, and, and, and not talking to each other, walking by, turning our backs to each other. We have to start loving through these things, showing each other that we love you despite whatever it is that we might have going on between us. We have to break that stuff down. And the only way that we can do it is through love. Somebody say love. love. We have to love each other because love repairs. Here's the thing. Love repairs what's broken. If you, if you think, of, think of love in a sense that, you know, if I think about, you know, back in the time when they were coming back into Jerusalem and they were repairing the wall. And the wall had all these breaks and, and broken parts and, and they had to repair all the, the, the broken parts. And what they used is they used the mortar or they used the mud or whatever they used in order to repair those broken pieces. That's love. Love is the thing that repairs what's broken. If we don't have love, if we can't love one another then we'll never be able to get past our hurts. We'll never be able to repair our marriages, our broken relationships with our children, with our family members, with our friends. God wants us to have relationship with each other. And the only way we can do that is through love. Somebody say love. And you know what else it says? It says that we should show hospitality to one another without grumbling. <laughs> You know, when you come in here on a Sunday morning and, 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 and Pastor Frank says, hey, can you do me a favor and, and, and really kind of clean up the bathroom real quick for us? You know, and you're like, I'm not supposed to be cleaning up the bathroom. That's not what I do. Right? But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, so hospitality. When we think about hospitality, we think about inviting people into our homes, and that's what we should do, right? Because the old church was formed on, on, on actually having church in the home. Right? But, but this is what? This is whose house? Whose house? Whose house? This is God's house. So if this is God's house, should we not show hospitality in God's house? So that means everyone that comes through those doors, should not they be greeted with a hug and a smile? And we're happy to see you in a genuinely way? Not, not with grumbling and, and griping like, yeah, hey, welcome. I'll see you later. But happy and actually glad to see them in the house of God? Because, because we've, been to, we've been told to have hospitality and not be grumbling about it. Have you ever been to a church where you walk in and not one, people say, one, one person says hi to you? Not one person comes over and greets you and says welcome to the church? Well, we can't be a church like that. That's not what this house is supposed to be like. 
this house is supposed to be like when you come in, it's not that I come up to Chris because me and Chris are boys. And I'm like, hey, what's up, Chris? And me and Chris are talking together and hanging out while somebody who's just visiting, no one speaks to. We have to seek out those and show hospitality. And it can't be in a, in a uh, I have to do it kind of way. Not because, you know, Pastor Frank and staff goes, hey, you guys should greet people. You should say hi to people when they come in. And, and especially new people, you should, you know, say hi to them. It shouldn't be in the grumble, I got to do it. Hi, how you doing? I'm actually glad. I'm happy. I'm excited that you're here. Because that means that God can move. That means that something powerfully can happen right here in the house with you today because you're here. And I know that God ordains every step of every person. So the fact that you're here today means that God has ordained it and you're here for a purpose. And we get in the middle of that purpose when we, when we bring our attitudes in there. So we have to greet people with, with, with a smile and with happiness and with hospitality and not grumble and complain. This is God's house. Everything that happens within this house is for the sake of God and for those who come here. So we should do it happily, whatever that is. If it's move chairs, sweep floors, clean bathrooms, whatever that is that we have to do in order to make this house a place of hospitality, we should be happy to do it. Amen? Amen. Somebody say hospitality. hospitality. And you know, I love this last part. Each of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace and its forms. Your gifts. So here's the thing when I think about gifts, right? I think about gifts where someone gives me something. They give me a gift. It's mine. Right? It's my gift. It's, it's for me to do whatever I want to do with it. But we get confused with the gift, the word gift. The word gift is, 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 we get confused because we think it's about us receiving something for us. But the truth of it is, is your gift is not for you. Your gift is for someone else. Your gift is not for you. It's for someone else. So your gift is, should be used in order to edify and lift up and build up the church. And when we take our gifts and we make it personal... We make it about ourselves, then we're taking away the glory of God. When our gifts are meant to edify our brothers, our sisters, to lift each other up, it's for someone else. It's not for you. That's why it says, it says for God's grace, for God's great purpose. Because it's because of God's grace that you have a gift. It's because he's decided to, to break enmity between he and us. And now we have gifts. And those gifts are for us to share with each other freely, happily, without fret or worry, without any tugging and pulling. It's not mine. So if you have a great voice, sing. Sing for the Lord. If you have the ability to teach, teach for the Lord. If you have the ability of administration, administrate for the Lord. If you have an ability to preach the gospel, preach the gospel for the, for the Lord. If you have the ability to be an evangelist and go out and, and, and tell everybody about Jesus, go out and tell everyone about Jesus because the gift is not yours, it's the Lord's. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship.
My heart 
opportunity to be here this evening. I have verse 11. <clears throat> if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives. For God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. To speak as the oracles of God. When that speaks, you know that oracles is a, is a special word. It talks about being powerful in the word. Logion is the word that's used for oracles. We don't understand logos. It's the word of God. It is God's thought and intent in the power of his word. He's saying be an oracle of God. If you're going to minister in the word, minister as an oracle of God. Let your words not be yours. Not about things I think about. Not about my fancies or my you know, things I get into. Let it be the Word of God. Communicate like a pipeline, a direct pipeline, the Word of God. Not fooling around, not playing around, but this is what thus says the Lord. And then he says, beyond that, let him speak, let him speak as the oracle, oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God gives. 
that minister is a word that we also know. It's, it's diakonos. It's the word we get deacon from. Minister, a servant, one who serves. One who serves in the word, speak as the oracles of God. One who serves through ministry, through servanthood, through doing, let him do it unto the glory of God. All the things, all the things we do. Peter wraps up ministry right here in these two phrases. He started out, be sober. Be sober and watch unto prayer. Go love. Love fervently. And love covers a multitude of sins. And grace. And then he goes into his servanthood. Serving in the word and serving in service or ministry. He, he wants fervent, sincere um, service from us. And it only happens... It's a reason this verse came last. As soon as Pastor Justin came out with this idea, as soon as I looked at it really quick, I said, I want verse 11. <laughs> I was the first one. They should change the names on the thing and, and put me last because I, I want verse 11. Because you can't serve in the Word and you can't serve in, in ministry and in service. And some people think one is higher than the other. They are not higher. It's we're called according to God calls us according to our several ability with the gifts that he places in us. And he calls us to use us. But there's, they're in an order here. Because until we watch, until we are sober-minded, until we come to a place where we are sober-minded and we put God first and we watch unto prayer, until we get to a place where we have love, fervent love, until we let love cover a multitude of sins and we're not easily upset and offended, until my love covers over all the little things that, that could get me upset, until I get to that place, my word, if I minister in the word, is as a tinkling brass and a sounding cymbal, and it means nothing. It does nothing. There's no anointing in it. Oh, I can preach like a house of fire. I can do spin moves and, and do splits. And, and I can sing songs and break into singing and, and do all. But there's no power. I'm not speaking as the oracle of God. I'm not speaking as a conduit, as the mouthpiece of God. I'm not doing that until I can be sober-minded until I can watch and to pray, until I have love that is fervent, until my love covers a multitude of sins, and I'm not, I'm not so, it's like I, when I used to have my cactus room, you couldn't do anything, you'd get cactus needles in you. I can't be that way. I've got to grow up. I've got to get to a place where love covers all the little pricks and scrapes and bangs of life, and I can preach the word because of love. And I can serve in whatever capacity he's called me to serve, whether it's up on the camera or in the sound booth or, or as a, a, an usher or a deacon or in the music or whatever he's called me to serve. I can do it with my whole heart because I'm not doing it for a show. I'm not doing it because I have to. I'm not doing it because there's no one else to do it. I'm doing it because God has called me to do it. He's put it in me, and I have no choice. It is like fire shut up in my bones. I have to let it out. I'm going to let it out because God has called me to do it, and I'm able to do it because he has not only called me, but he's anointed me. He's empowered me. And when I do it, when I watch unto pray, when I'm sober-minded, when I love fervently, when I let love cover a multitude of sins, when I allow him to let me grow to the place where I'm able to be a conduit for his word or a true servant and able to take up a towel instead of a, a big shot, uh, some kind of big shot hat, we'll say. Until I'm able to do that, I'm not going to serve. But when I do that, 
when I get to the place where he moves through me and there's an anointing and there's a special blessing, look what happens in verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it with the ability that God gives, that God in all things may be glorified. He's called us that he can be glorified. We glorify him when we speak, whether we're called to a ministry of the word and we speak, we speak that he's glorified. Not us, not me. God is glorified. For him that serves, let, it, let him do it with the ability that God has given. I serve. I serve. I wait on the tables. I administer communion. I, I, I clean things up. The guys who tore down the, the wall downstairs serve that God may be glorified. I do it that God may be glorified. That's why Jesus says, don't let your right hand even know. Don't even let people know what you're doing that God will be glorified. And when God is glorified, this is part of this cool. When God is glorified in all things, he will be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion, praise and honor forever and ever. He's glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and honor. To Jesus Christ is glory and honor because through him, God is glorified. And so Jesus is that glory and honor because God is praised. We are lifting up the Father and we're praising him through it. We are causing God to be glorified when we operate in the gifts and in the calling that he has called us to. And we're operating in those gifts and callings effectively, effectively and powerfully when we watch and pray, when we're sober-minded, when we love fervently, when we let love cover a multitude of sins, and when we are full of grace. one more song together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. 
Father, we thank you for this night, Lord, that your spirit would be here, Lord, that, Lord, everything that we would do, everything that we would sing, everything, every word that came glorified you. So, Lord, we just pray, Father, that you would, Lord, continue, Lord, to just minister to us even as we leave this place. Lord, minister to us in our cars, Lord. Lord, on our way home, Lord, minister to us. Lord, and we're laying in our beds tonight, Lord. May your spirit still be ministering to us. Because we love you so much. We need you so much. Lord, may you keep us until Sunday morning when we can be with each other once again. Lord, we can worship you in a corporate way once again. Lord, we can hear your word once again. We love you, and we honor you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord some praise. Hey, can we give it up for Pastor Justin and the worship team? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you guys like this? Did you like this? All right, we got to do this again. We got to do this again. Bless you. Uh, please be safe going home, and we'll see you guys Sunday morning.